In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Question for you then. Who was Thomas? What do we know about him? Well, it seems very little. We know he was a twin. And whilst he's not mentioned much in the first three Gospels, John, I feel, portrays him as slightly gloomy, practical, and a no-nonsense type of disciple. His reaction when his friends told him about Jesus leads to him being forever known as Doubting Thomas. Not very complimentary, is it? But let's think for a moment about how Thomas might have been feeling. Imagine if someone came up to you and said, you know so-and-so who died yesterday? Well, I have seen her alive and well in Tesco's. What would your reaction be? Would you be excited with them or think perhaps they've been hallucinating because of their grief? I'll let you decide. Jesus tells, oh, sorry, John tells of the time when the disciples were hiding out of fear. They thought that perhaps what had happened to Jesus might also happen to them. They were together in a room. The door was locked. But somehow, Jesus had passed through that locked door and he'd appeared to the disciples in flesh. The disciples had told Thomas about this. Thomas wasn't with them at the time. Um, and they had told him that they'd seen the wounds in his hands and in his side, and this had convinced them that Jesus was real, not a ghost, not a vision. They assured Thomas that there was no doubt about it. Jesus, who had been crucified, who had died and buried, was alive. However, Thomas can't believe this. He knew that Jesus had died, so how could he be alive? After all, when you're dead, you stay dead. Thomas doesn't want to be disappointed. He doesn't want to believe something that just could be the imagination of grief-stricken friends. He knows that grief can affect people, and he's adamant. He won't believe it's true until he sees the scars in his hand and his side. He needs to see it for himself. To be fair, Thomas doesn't poo-poo what the disciples are telling him. He could have dismissed them as being mad and told them he wanted to hear no more nonsense, but he didn't. He just wants to be convinced. He wants proof that what the disciples had witnessed was real and not just some trick. And isn't that what it's like for us sometimes? Yes, there are times when our faith in God is made stronger and when we are more aware of God's presence in our lives. Perhaps a prayer has been answered for you or you've experienced some healing. And when this happens, we can be convinced that God is real, that his love and care for us is not in doubt because we have actually experienced something. But, there's always a but, there are also times when what we experience is causes us to question and doubt. Does God know me at all? Where is God, for instance, when a child meets a tragic death? Where was God in the wars, in the First World War, when so many people were killed, and again in the Second World War, and in wars since? Where is God when we lose our jobs, have no money, go through a divorce, so on? And Thomas, having experienced Jesus' death and what followed, Thomas would have been experiencing a very, very low closeness to God. He probably didn't think God was with him at all. <coughs> Where was God when Jesus was crucified? And even though, again, the disciples had seen the risen Jesus, Thomas wants to see it for himself. Again, I ask you, would you agree that there's a bit of Thomas in each one of us? Where we are with our faith can depend on our experiences. Does the evidence about God and what we're experiencing suggest that God is real and loves us, 
Or do we feel God is sometimes distant and uncaring? We are all human beings, people reliant on the experiences of our lives here and now. And God has empowered us with feelings, with emotions, and those feelings and emotions will determine how we experience the presence or absence of God in our lives. Thomas had feelings too. He was missing Jesus, and he probably did feel that God had abandoned him. Jesus doesn't tell Thomas off for doubting that he is indeed the resurrected Jesus. Instead, he invites Thomas to put his fingers in and place his hands on his wounds to stop him doubting and to help him to believe. Jesus goes out of his way for Thomas to let him experience the resurrection firsthand and to reassure the troubled and doubting disciple that the other disciples were indeed speaking the truth. And Thomas believes, and he exclaims, My Lord and my God. And Thomas's experience shows us that seeing, touching, and experiencing God in different ways does indeed strengthen our faith. It confirms our understanding of God and reassures us of God's love. But it is not the basis of our faith. If our faith in God rested only on our experiences, then our faith would be up and down like a yo-yo, depending on whether those experiences were good ones or bad ones. For each of us, there will come a time when we have faith in God in spite of what our experiences are, that even without proof, we can be reassured that God is powerful and does indeed love us, and that should enable us to have complete trust in him. We believe it, though we can't see it. And faith is just this, trusting, relying on God, even when our experience of him barely exists. Thomas should have believed that Jesus would rise again, because Jesus had said that he would. All the disciples should have believed this in spite of what they experienced. We all need to believe a promise or trust a word, regardless of what happens. God is true to his word and never deserts us because he does indeed love us. And we need to believe that, even when it would be easier to think otherwise. Faith is believing that God knows what he is doing even though our experiences might tell us otherwise. Or, as Martin Luther King puts it, faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Jesus came to Thomas with understanding and compassion, helping him in his faith, just as he helps us. And when our faith wavers, we have the Holy Spirit to help us. Jesus says to each and every one of us, just as he said to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? And for me, this is a Jesus that is not afraid to be challenged. He is happy for us to ask questions. And Thomas is a reminder that whilst Jesus is our shepherd, we are not merely his sheep. Amen.